This time on Graveyard Cars, the graveyard is covered in an unexpected blanket of snow, prompting Mark to install its first mausoleum. Meanwhile, the ghouls turn their focus to a 1969 GTX, and Mark promises to announce what he's building for SEMA Show 2019. Here's a story of a cat named Iceman, that's me, who was training up three very nutty ghouls. All of them had their own issues, like their leader, but he still called them fools. Worse than that, it's a story of the Iceman's woman who was bringing up Alyssa Marie Rose. Iceman Seed now has her own daughters. The youngest one has curls. That's Brookie. And then one day Iceman said to his wifey, you know what, babe, I've got a crazy hunch that this group should somehow form a car shop. That's the way we all became the Graveyard Bunch. The Graveyard Bunch. The Graveyard Bunch. That's the way we became the Graveyard Bunch. Yeah! <laughs> An unexpected snowfall has blanketed the graveyard. While in the assembly room, Justin is installing the wheels and tires on our 1969 GTX, which just received its drivetrain. Most of the Mopars at Graveyard Cars undergo original equipment style restorations, meaning they receive factory correct as opposed to aftermarket parts. But with the GTX, the customer wants to add a popular second day add-on, the classic Krager SS wheels. With more snow on the way and room in the shop running out, Mark calls Shelter Logic to build the graveyard's first mausoleum. This massive covered area will protect newly dipped cars from the elements and keep them out of the way until it's their turn to go through the metal and assembly shops. It's a 70 Challenger and we just got our ship linkage from Pass On Performance and just getting ready to install it right now. I'm going to put the Z-Bar in and then follow that up with the uh, reverse lockout linkage. Some of these things can be a little tricky. Alright, this is the clutch rod. When you push the Z-bar, or your clutch, it rocks this Z-bar down and hits your clutch. All right, I'm gonna put the reverse lockout linkage in. I'm gonna put this in here. This is for, it's a little safety feature that Dodge does with their manual transmissions. You put this in reverse, when you're parked, it'll lock the car. You also still want to use your park brake, and it allows you not to remove your key unless you're in reverse. That I used last time. So I'm going to go ahead and get the shift spacer on here. Um, to, it brings the shift mechanism out from the transmission a little bit. It's gonna line up with your the hole in the floor. Uh, the pistol grip will sh stick right in right in there. Once I once it gets put through the floor, 
I can go through and actually connect that stuff. But we'll do that stuff up top. Now I'll get the shift mechanism up in here. This one's a little tricky. It's kind of tight. Uh, line up the bolts where they need to go. One right at the top. Tighten these bolts. It'll give you much room up here. Once I get this thing tightened up, I can put all the shift linkage rods on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the shift linkage rods in. Let's start with the middle. Yeah, there's three rods that go on here. Two will come through this, the frame rail right here. And then one will loop down around the cam member. There's nothing you have to be super careful of. I mean, you wanna make sure that your rods aren't gonna rub against uh, the frame right around here. Yeah, so once you get all these in place, you go ahead and you can you can go ahead and set your uh, neutral gate. Basically, it lines up all of your your gears in for neutral, and so you can move through neutral freely. And then this is our reverse linkage rod, and then that will attach to our reverse lockout. So this rod right here. When you put that thing in park, it moves this rod right here and twists this up and that will push a lever up onto your steering column, which causes it to lock it out. See how those move? This is the rod coming off of the reverse lockout. Now that I got the rods connected, I can go ahead and set, adjust my neutral gate. Now I can drop the car, put the shifter on, and put on our clutch rod. With all hands on deck, Shelter Logic erects the skeleton for the mausoleum. Well, everything went together really uh, honestly, well. Honestly, yeah. You know, when you're manufacturing all these parts, you know, there's always a chance of you know, mistakes being made, but we, everything went together just perfectly. Yeah, I mean, every, every single hole lined up, yeah. you know, I mean, we really didn't have any issues with that whatsoever. It actually went very well it, with, uh, we had like six guys to do it and the three lifts and pretty much just went up and everything went fit together real well. And yeah, This is uh, the longest cover that we've mm -hmm. ever pulled. I mean, typically our covers terminated about 100 foot and for, for this one we wanted to go the, the extra mile, make certain that you, we've got it all in one, one span. Considering it's the first time that we've ever pulled anything that big, we couldn't have asked for it to lay out any better than what it did. Shelter Tech is a, a line within Shelter Logic. Uh, we have a multitude of different lines, and this being basically our, our heavy duty. Um, if you want something with more of a, an industrial feel to it, you know, something that, that's really going to hold up over the years, and th this is definitely the one to go with. Dodge is part of the Chrysler Corporation. Shelter Tech is that brand within the Shelter Logic family. In the booth right now, I have the doors and the fenders for our 1969 Dodge Daytona. Um, Mark documented this car very heavily, so you can see that on the inside of the door when they did their blackout, they masked it just kind of a certain you know, half-ass way. And the cool thing is, is that because he documented it so well, I'm able to go back and do that. You're never gonna see it unless you take the car apart, but it's one of those features I think is cool to have. Um, if I was redoing the car and it was my, my own, I would do the exact same thing. And like I said, it's just, it's not a feature that's, that's a big deal, but to me it is. So if somebody ever takes that door panel off, you can look and know that we redid it, but at least you can say, wow, they redid exactly what Factory did back in 1969. Uh, right now, the guys are getting ready to disassemble a 1969 Dodge Charger RTSE. Now, this is a very unique car. The fact that it's most likely one of only one ever built just like it, okay? They built 391 Dodge Chargers in 1969 with a power sunroof. This car's an RTSE. They only built 29 of them. Now, that's the, the latest and the greatest information that we have to date right now. 
If you take into consideration, along with that one of 29, the color T T5 copper, it's got leather interior, which was standard on the SE. Also has power windows, speed control, AM8 track, and a TikTok tack. You add all those things together and you're talking about a very, very rare car. One of the things they have to do is look very carefully and be very cautious when they disassemble the interior. You got that? Uh -huh. The reason for that is we're looking for the broadcast sheet. In 1969 on that fender tag, nowhere does it say that it's a sunroof car. That only appears on a broadcast sheet. Now, the fact is, most likely, that broadcast sheet is not in there. Even though it's a fairly original car, mice have been in there. When there's mice in there, there's usually little confetti shreds of what's left of a broadcast sheet. But you guys gonna do a good job, take it apart carefully. I'll be here to torture them. What do you think? You ready to start disassembling a car? Yes. Let's do it. Good, you got your hammers and chisels out? Yes, sir. And cross I the love it. Huh? Nothing. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> I'll tell you another thing that makes this a really, really neat thing. Today is February 4th, 2019. On February 3rd, 1969, 50 years ago yesterday, this car was born. So on its 50th anniversary, that's the day it's getting disassembled. 50 years and one day to the day the car was built. So it's a pretty special car and I'm excited to see it get taken apart. These bolts that hold the hinge on and the bolts that hold the hinge to the hood they're original paint. They have, you don't see any slots here where they've been ran up and down, where there's paint missing from adjustments. This is the factory adjustment height right here without having ever been touched before. So when you see that bolt, that bolt and that bolt are original paint, as is the one on the front. So while a charger is a charger, and there's lots of them out back, we've, done, we've restored a lot of them. This is the first one that had speed control. So things like which bolts hold that speed control unit in place, where they go exactly, that's great information. I can take pictures of that, measurements, send it to my friend Dave Weiss. Dave Weiss will be able to use it in his books for guys that are putting a car back together with the N88 speed control, but don't have original reference material. So again, lots of good DNA on this car. Yeah, the, the manufacturer we get this from, they do a UV treatment uh, in-house, so it's already set by the time we get it. It's a, uh, a scrim that gets coated in a PVC coating, and it's on both sides, uh, so you can, uh, it, it's about as durable as it's gonna get. Everything that we, we sell, this is definitely the top of the line. This is definitely the heaviest weight that we have. Uh, we, we go down to a uh, 14 is the one below that, and then beyond that, we have different uh, types of fabrics available. Made in America. <laughs> <laughs> Made in it's, Connecticut. It's, yep, it's manufactured in uh, Watertown, Connecticut. We're the world's largest manufacturer of sun, shade, and shelter. shelter. It's on the brochure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Cousin Dougie and Justin continue the disassembly of the 1969 Charger RTSE. Now we should be able to get that balance free. Okay. And we're all waiting for Mark to finally reveal the car he's going to build and equip with the first ever third generation 426 Elephant engine. The success of the 1968 model year paved the way for the 1969 Dodge Charger. Its exclusive styling, ample room, and greater comfort won out over the competition, proving that there was a sizable market for the Dodge Charger. Under the hood, the 1969 Charger races ahead with outstanding power, performance, and handling. The artistically sculpted body featured an all-new two-yards-wide grille, and Charger maintained its signature vacuum-operated 
field headlights as standard equipment. But that's just the front. There's no mistaking the full-width taillight package, beautifully divided to wrap up the overall charger. One unified, cohesive design that made Charger the most wanted two-door hardtop and makes this 1969 Charger our Corpse of the Week. You notice this original paint right here? Uh-huh. So this car is either original paint, like I'm saying, because there's no marks on any of the bolts, or possibly Willie Run DMC. <laughs> Willie! You paint this cow panel, buddy? Hey, he's ignoring me right now. That's okay. <laughs> eh, I like your color a lot better than factories anyway. Okay, don't mean to get in anybody's way there. Go ahead. I don't see so good, Rooster. Can you tell me what it says right there, that little code right there? P31. P31. That's not an airplane, right? So what does that P31 mean? Anybody know? Paint code? No. No? Justina? AC? No, no, no. That's the power windows. That's OK, as you were, gentlemen. Oh, that was my second That's OK. Guess. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Gonna give the boys some little, some little pop quizzes from time to time. See how they're doing on their codes. These guys are dropped out in the middle of a, a military zone, and their lives depend on these codes. And I wish they knew them. You help me out. I don't see so good. What is that darn darn thing right there? R22. It's an R22. What's that R22? I always forget. Just know the answer. Shoot it right out there. Don't be shy. Radio. Oh, boy. radio, very good. What kind of radio? This is where you'll look and see what it's got in it, uh -huh. but it's missing. AM, FM? No. A-Track? AM, A-Track. AM, A-Track. That's Seriously? right. Seriously? Yeah. That's that is pretty awesome. Good. I can't see so good. What is that code right there next to my thumb? Um, Fender lights? Let, let's tell the L31. audience. L31. <laughs> <laughs> L31. Yeah. Fender. But they are fender mounted turn signal indicators, except uh -huh. in this particular case, it's hood mounted because it's a charger. Doug, you've done a lot of these engines over here. You know the clamp that holds the throttle cable, right? You ever see one like that? I don't know. That's the speed control. It has the one on the bottom down here that holds the actual throttle, uh -huh. and then this overriding one for the speed controls mounted up here. Very unique piece. So this cable right here runs back, goes over here into the speed control servo right here. That's what pulls that throttle open. Then the one on the bottom is the one that actually goes into the car itself. So that is a very unique piece. Seems kind of different. That little bracket. It's right here. I've never seen that before. I'm not sure what that is. It wasn't even hooked to anything. Maybe somebody had hood pins on it at some point. That's oh, it's probably in an accident. Yeah, the original mount was broken apparently, it looks like. See how that has the, the big piece here? It's mm -hmm. gone on this one. Yeah, this is what was holding the fender in place to the core support, was this bracket. And that's because the triangular shaped or somewhat triangular shaped original one like that side has over there was missing and that's probably from an accident. The reason why is that triangular shaped one that you have over there, that's the factory one. This is something somebody built. Now cars aren't perfect, you know, you can see it got in an accident, it has a dent in the fender there. Oh, they hit something hard, didn't they? Thank you. 
Ready? Nice, we got our hood latch out. Cool. So we can't get the uh, lower valance off until we get the uh, bumper guards off. So I'm gonna take that off right now and hopefully we can get that lower valance down. All right, now we should be able to get that valance free. Okay. Okay, so look at all that undercoating. I had to dig all that off there in order to get a socket on that thing so I could get it loose. Okay. Will interrupts Justin and Dougie to get the little dead wagon and the 2017 SEMA CUDA outside and loaded up to be shipped down to Los Angeles for the Auto Classic Car Show, which the ghouls will be attending at the end of the week. With the A100 and the CUDA off to LA, Justin and Dougie get back to work on the Charger disassembly. In our Corpse of the Week, we learned that there were some design changes that distinguished the 1969 Charger from its predecessor, such as the grille and taillights. What remained virtually unchanged on the 1969 Dodge Charger from its 1968 predecessor? Was it the tires, the body, the side marker reflectors? Think you know? Find out after the break. So, what remained virtually unchanged on the 1969 Charger from its 1968 predecessor? Was it the tires, the body, or the side marker reflectors? If you guessed the body, you're right. While the Charger received subtle upgrades, the body maintained its iconic 1968 look and continued as standard equipment was the racing style flip-up gas cap emblazoned with the word fuel. Okay, so we have the fenders off now, and we're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting all the engine connections. Now that Mark is done distracting us with uh, trivia on the Vintag, we can actually get to 
tearing the stuff apart on the inside of the car, um, or under the hood, I should say. So make our disconnections so we can uh, drop the drivetrain. We've got most of the wiring disconnected from the engine. Yeah, all the wiring. Uh, we've got the front fenders, the grill, um, the lower valance, making all of our disconnections under the hood. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a break for lunch. We're getting hungry. <laughs> what are you getting? Uh, we're probably going to have chicken again. Chicken? Chicken. I'm thinking a burrito. Burrito? Yeah. OK. Meanwhile. Curious George finishes up some patching work on another GTX, currently in the queue, before sending it off to the mudroom. Now that we got the drivetrain installed in the 69 GTX, I can go ahead and start putting some bright work on and our side markers. Don't want the gasket to fall off. <clears throat> so what I do, put that support bracket right behind it. Makes it a lot easier to locate the holes. You gotta be careful with these because <clears throat> if you go too tight or try to go too fast, you can break off the, the studs for the quick nuts. And if you do that, you gotta get a new one. There you go. Not too tight, not too loose. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start getting our body trim on here. So a good way to make sure you got these put on correct is he's got a little contour that go with the shape of the wheel opening. Set that there and start setting your, your alignment and spacing on the studs. And you think you got it lined up good, you can start going ahead and putting the nuts on. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, wheel opening trim on. There's no specific order that you have to put all of these things on. I just like to work from front to back. I always set this top one. Makes it a lot easier to get the rest of them. This car is gorgeous. Love the color. Um, B5 blue car. Coming up. Justin shifts his attention to our 1969 GTX, installing the ornamentation and chrome moldings. These you have to be really careful when you're tightening down the nuts, that you don't over tighten them or else they will snap. And Mark has still yet to announce the 2019 SEMA car he's going to build and equip with the very first elephant engine. Back in the assembly shop, Justin is installing the trim and ornamentation on the 1969 Plymouth GTX. These ones you have to be careful with too, or else you can strip them, and then you'll be starting over with some new studs again. All right. Door ones are a little bit tricky because it's long and you got a lot of things to line up. So what I like to do is, once I get them, 
lined up in here as best as I can. I like to get my spacing in these holes lined up with these uh, posts as close as I can. It's easier with two people, but if you're by yourself, I like to get them set into place. Use some tape to hold it up against the body so you can work on the other end. Definitely don't want these popping off and scratching up Will's beautiful paint job. That one on, pull your tape off. There you go, it's starting to look good. Gotta climb in the car to get these ones. Makes it a little bit trickier if you have your window regulators in already. Not impossible though. All right. So one more back here. All right, now that I got that trim on there, I can go ahead and throw on the GTX logo. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this as I did with the trim. Use the tape. Keep it on there for me. There you go. Get the wheel opening trim on the back. Now I can move on to the last piece of trim on the back quarter panel. And then set our last side marker. That's it. Make sure all the holes line up. We learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1969 Charger was sculpted to maintain a unified, cohesive design, making the Charger the most wanted two-door hardtop of 1969. True or false? The 1969 Charger had four vinyl top options that included tan bore grain. Think you know? Find out if you're right after the break. So, we learned in our Corpse of the Week that the 1969 Charger was sculpted to maintain a unified, cohesive design. Now, we've made the claim that one of the 1969 Charger's four vinyl top options included tan bore grain. Were we telling the truth? We were. Tan bore grain was included as an option along with white, black, and green. If you didn't know, now you do. Tape off. 
Now we can get that rear side marker in, call this side done. Now that I got this side done, I can go and do the other side. It goes pretty easy. Um, as long as you get everything lined up, um, it's, it's just a breeze. All right, we're going to go ahead and get the taillights put in the 69 GTX. Going to put the taillight bezel in here first. These you have to be really careful when you're tightening down the nuts that you don't over tighten them or else they will snap off the posts that are that come through and fasten to the taillight housing. It's a real soft metal. Take your time, do it slow, and everything will work out. Yeah, if you tighten these up too tight, um, they will strip out. So you just have to be careful, take your time. What I like to do is get each of them uh, just a little bit tight and then you go through and make your final, your final adjustment so you get even pressure all the way around. All right, now that we got that one on, we can move over to the driver's side. I did already go through and I put our uh, gaskets in here and then there's another gasket that lies right under the lens to the uh, taillight housing. Already got those preps because I did a pre-fit. So go ahead and get these ones on the, on the car. These aren't really difficult to put on. It's just you really have to be careful with how tight you make everything because you really do not want to break off those studs. All right, so now that I got the taillight set into place, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the mounting stud uh, protectors right on it, and these, they just slip right over the, the studs. Facebook Live, Graveyard Car. I'm gonna go open that door, I'm gonna pull in a beautiful car that you're gonna be blown away when you find out what this engine's going in. Got it? Oh, well, I can't let you see that. You're gonna have to tune in April 30th, sorry. I know we built up to it, but sorry about that. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Okay, now, you who actually pay me to be here, I'm gonna go open the door, to the beautiful receiver of this 1,000 horsepower, 950 foot-pound of torque. Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you and I don't know the next lyric or I'd sing it? Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. George, you need to eat a salad, buddy. All right. Here we wow. go. Alyssa well, wouldn't hurt you either. Like five, Kill the lights! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, it, is, is this, this another one of his on gimmicks? Or something he needs to be on, but something's off, guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad we're doing this oh car. Oh my goodness. Look at this that. This is it. She runs. I'm excited for this. We're actually bringing it out. Yeah. pretty cool. A little early. A little er early for us guys. We don't usually do these this year. Right. I'm excited. I always wanted to do this. Remember this, you guys, and we're struggling a bit 10 days before. What do you think of that beautiful thing? You are. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, don't kill oh, my excitement. I love doing this. <laughs> My job would be done first. 60 days before SEMA to start it, right? Yeah, right? So wait, we'll just... 
Now, this you is, can't tell me that's not going to be the coolest. It's a boat. That was the best car at SEMA. Period. Yeah. End of story. That's the one that's going to take the show right there. 1958 Plymouth Fury. A little early. Huh? A little early. We usually do. What are you talking about? Well, you don't, you don't usually do 58s. You're not concerned? Oh, the car's a little early? Yeah. Okay, you should use words in front of it. <laughs> what do they call those? Adverbs? <laughs> You kind of link them together and make a sentence out of them. Yeah. No. That's a, uh, that is a 1958. It's a little earlier than the cars we're used to, but it has significance because of the cool movie, Christine. It's your favorite movie. It is one of my favorite That's movies. That's why we're doing it. Well, you've seen it, right? <laughs> yeah. Georgie, you've seen Christine? Yeah, well, I've yeah. seen it. Oh, yeah. Plenty oh, of everybody times. Everybody, you've seen it. I made you watch it as a kid 50 times. Gosh. I know every one of the words. I know. Yeah. It's Old man cool, Darnell. Man. Yeah, well, don't think about it too long. I'll throw you out on your bad word ass. You still said a bad word. No, bad word is not a bad word. It's replacing a bad word. Anyways, well, this is cool. 58 Fury. Cool. Take a look inside this bad boy. Can't tell me that elephant isn't going to fit beautiful oh, in there. Look. look at the room. Look at that room. There's plenty of room for it. Although, i got to say, that is one tall engine. So we may have to uh, section that lower cross member to drop it down in the saddle some. We'll get hold of old Ron Jenkins out there at Magnum Force and see. Need a lot of room yeah. for that supercharger. Yeah. You need a lot yeah. of room for it. Because I don't want to do anything, just, just like the cars in the past. I want the outside of this car to look 100% as it did in the motion picture. Exactly. Are we going to soup up the brakes or anything? No, you don't need to. They're already souped. Why would you want them souped up? They're already souped well, up. I, thousand care, it, thousand horsepower? I never care about how... Oh fast I stop, I care about how fast I get there. There okay. you go. Okay. That's why I adjust all the mirrors in the car to me <laughs> and not behind me because I don't want to see where I've been. I want to see how cool I look getting there. No, the car is super cool. Yeah, uh, my dad's ridiculous, like always. Uh, it's the same thing. It never gets old for him, I guess, with the lights and the smoke and the fog machines and, and all grand that. Grand entrances. The car is awesome. I, I do have a few concerns just because it's a little bit earlier, the year is a 58, and that's a little bit out of our wheelhouse. I know that my dad's capable of it, but it just stresses me out a little bit because I know that we're gonna run into problems, like we do. And so, <laughs> and so yeah, and how long do we have till SEMA? Clock, the clock's already ticking, so. Yeah, not enough time. Never, yeah. never. And I'm never sure my dad will wait like start at like 36 days before, so. It's always God, great, I hope not. Yeah. I'm excited, but at the same hand, I'm really nervous. I think I'm gonna have to put a cot up in the back just to make sure we get through this one. I mean, this is out of our norm. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows what's gonna go wrong? But same hand, I'm an optimist. Let's do this, let's hammer this out. It's gonna be badass when it's all done. It's gonna be a pretty interesting project. Uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. He does it to us every time, doesn't he? I think it's a great idea though. I really do. Love the car, love this car, so. Yeah, I'm super excited about this car. Uh, it'll probably, I mean, this is like, the, what, the first 50s car we've done here? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm excited for it. Killer movie, killer car. Um, you know, I remember working on cars with my grandpa, you know, and he has some, you know, 50 Pontiacs and some 60s. So, but this will be the first time I've ever got to, you know, build out a complete car like this. So it'll be a challenge, but it'll be great. Cool. <laughs> I've worked. All right. <laughs> I just think we'd... Here we go. Okay. All, All right. right. Don't piss her off. Yeah. yeah. Carl chasing you. She's down. already been chasing me around. 